This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. An email that grabs his attention and engages his emotions and makes him stop and forget about the rest of his emails, that is not making his life better. At that moment, it is actually making his life worse. Hi, my name is Eero Kafetz, and this is The List Building Lifestyle, the only podcast which delivers cutting-edge conversion strategies from the online trenches straight to your earbuds. Download the transcript of today's episode and all future episodes at listbuildinglifestyleshow.com. I also invite you to grab a free copy of the Wealthy List Builder Survival Guide at listbuildinglifestyleshow.com forward slash survival. And now, once again, it's time to claim your list building lifestyle. Welcome back to another edition of the List Building Lifestyle with your host, Igor Kafetz. I first saw Nate Rifkin speak at Yannick Silver's Underground Seminar. He was dropping bomb after bomb after bomb, stuff I never heard anyone else talk about before. Right then and there, I knew I had to get him on the List Building Lifestyle show and be the first to get Nate to share his wealth of email knowledge. But first, who is Nate Rifkin? Since becoming obsessed with direct response marketing, Nate's founded and co-founded three businesses gone bankrupt and has recently helped one of Agora's largest divisions launch a brand new nutritional supplement franchise. Since then, Nate's copy has sold over $5 million worth of supplements and products. Today, he's going to reveal his never-before-talked-about-anywhere email strategies. He'll get ideas, examples, and even his go-to source for email marketing inspiration and content, which has nothing to do with email. Nate. So grateful to have you on the show today. Oh, thank you very much, Igor. I'm, I'm really honored to be here. Thank you. Now, before we dive in, and I promise you folks, this is going to be one for the books. This is going to be a really hot episode for anyone who's uh, doing email marketing and who wants to do better with that. Nate, do you mind sharing your story with us? Because I am pretty sure nobody listening to the show right now has ever heard your name before. Certainly, yeah, I'd love to do that. And it's true, I really have been spending the last several years just having my head down, um, grinding out sales copy, writing emails, figuring out what makes money. But yeah, I've never really talked about it uh, publicly. So I first got into direct marketing and eventually internet marketing well over uh, 10 years ago. In fact, um, I dropped out of college to do it and I just dove in and I really I learned sales copy and I learned how to write emails and and uh, long form sales letters and eventually VSLs just to build up my own businesses. I, I had no idea that there's even such a thing as freelance copywriting or anything like that. So I, I, I focused on the health niche and I started selling information products, ebooks, books, DVDs, courses, that sort of thing. And th- I was good enough to get into trouble. I could make money. I, um, I spent a lot of money buying email, email drops to large lists, which we can talk about. And I, was actually, I actually made some sizable profits but I had no idea how to balance my books or how to run a sustainable business. I was, I was a pretty stupid kid. Eventually, I co-founded a nutritional supplement company, and that collapsed largely because of personal reasons. In fact, I got my butt kicked out of that company. And right around that time, uh, my other business ventures sort of spiraled downhill as well. So eventually, um, it was around the age of, I think, 27 or 26, I, uh, I actually had to file for bankruptcy. And that, I think, really changed me because I was a pretty no BS guy before. But since then, I just had this ruthless, razor sharp focus on only doing what really generates cash in marketing and accepting no substitutes. So since around that time, I had to take some really tough manual labor jobs. I unloaded trucks. Uh, I was a guy on the street corner spinning a sign for businesses full time at one point. And the entire time I scraped together every last bit of change and, and spare money I had to keep testing out my sales copy. I even got into direct mail selling nutritional supplements of my own. And this whole time I was in touch with some other marketers showing them my results. And eventually, this is about Going on three years ago, a marketing friend of mine referred me to Agora Financial, which which was one of the largest Agora divisions. Now we're kind of in the running for the largest Agora division. And if no one knows what Agora is, 
it's a, it's kind of the 800 pound gorilla in the internet marketing space. I think it was doing about 600 million a year when I joined up. Now we might be up to a billion a year or, or getting close to that. Um, and that's in total, all the divisions put together and they sell financial advice, health supplements, health advice. So I was in Colorado at the time and I clicked with Agora Financial. They flew me in, I talked with them and they offered me a job and I packed up all my things in my car, drove to Baltimore, which is, I don't know, like 1200 miles away. And since then, I've been busting my butt uh, writing copy for them. We started a brand new nutritional supplement franchise. I'm now responsible for about 90% of the copy for that franchise. It's about two years old. Uh, and now I'm back in Denver uh, working for them remotely as a, as a contractor. And I'm also building up my own uh, supplement business. So uh, yeah, like I said, or, or I should say, like I told you privately, like you mentioned, I think I've generated over $5 million for them. I'd have to check the exact figure, but I've been pretty proud of that. And I've learned a tremendous amount of what really works, not what people claim works. So that's why, you know, I was excited to meet you and, and um, you know, share today. Wow. Quite a journey you went through. So you, you've gone from owning a business to being kicked out of a business to filing bankruptcy to spinning signs on, on street corners to working with and for, or should I say with at this point, since you're a contractor with Agora, who pretty much is the largest, you know, information marketing publishing company in the world. So they felt comfortable enough to allow you to, you know, just run the the whole copy division for the one of the largest supplement businesses they've got. It's it sounds pretty dramatic when you when you sum it all up like that. Yeah, you're right. You know, and you know, when I first came on board, it, it was it, supplements are new to them. And um, I was, of course, new to them. But as as things rolled on, yeah, I, I just had more and more fun busting out copy for them. And we're really proud of what we've done. Yeah. Wow. OK, so let me then address one of the biggest concerns, uh, which is kind of just hovering over us at this point. What what the hell do supplements have to do with uh, selling business opportunity, make money online products and, you know, that sort of stuff that we kind of specialize in and guys here is why I decided to bring Nate on the show. In fact, I really, 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 really uh, chased him down for that. Basically, the supplement niche has lots of limitations. So when you advertise, when you do pay traffic, whether it's Google, Facebook, or any other network, you're really not allowed to say a lot of stuff that you want to say. Because, you know, Nate uh, works in, 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 in an industry that claims to cure diabetes, you know, to beat all kinds of different diseases. And all these advertising networks are really strict on what you can and cannot say, which is exactly what we have to deal with every single day, promoting uh, money-making products and make money online products and internet marketing software courses, etc. So the reason... I really wanted Nate to kind of come in and, and share what he's got is because he found a way to stop making claims and instead say things that are way more powerful, that not only avoid, you know, getting you in trouble, but also convert so much better. So Nate, really, I just, I actually don't really have a question. I sort of hope you kind of just jump right into it and share with us where do most email marketers go wrong? What is what is that thing that nobody talks about that actually works? Well, yeah, you know, that's that's actually perfect. I can just dive right in because I've been really thinking about what I wanted to say and how I wanted to present it in a way that would deliver a maximum impact to um, who's listening to this, which actually that ties in perfectly to the mindset of email marketing. There is a lot of space devoted to email tricks and probably a hundred times more to tricks for writing sales copy. But I've never really heard anyone take you by the hand and say, hey, look, here is how you have to approach email marketing. So I'm going to I'm going to attempt to do that. Very, very recently, we brought someone on board uh, the Agora team who was to write our uh, email newsletter. And I'm not talking about necessarily email copy to drive sales. This is more of a a content focused e-letters, you know, health topics and stuff like that. And she's a good writer and she loves health. Great person. And she's doing awesome. But when she first came on board, I noticed something. 
Her subject lines could have used a lot of improvement. They weren't eye grabbing. They weren't attention grabbing. And the openings of her of her e-letter, you know, they weren't exactly the most enticing stuff. You know, I thought and I thought to myself, you know, the the challenge she's experiencing is actually the same challenge as uh, an email marketer who's purely interested in driving sales. It's the exact same challenge as someone who has a course on making money, who has a list of prospects, or they're uh, renting a, an outside list, and they want to grab some eyeballs to get them on their VSL so they can make some cash. So I sat down with her uh, one day, and I realized you know, she had a, a pretty academic background. And anyone who's gone through school, and anyone who has had a, let's call it a regular nine to five job, if they are trained in writing at all. It, they are trained in writing that uh, delivers information and is effective for making a person's life easier or better, uh, whether it's uh, delivering information on how to use machinery or how to improve your health or uh, something about you know, an organizational chart management, uh, providing updates via email, whatever. It's all about making someone's life easier. So when I started talking to this woman about how um, she could improve her subject line and um, her email copy to get more people reading it, I told her, your job is not to make their lives better. Your job is to make their lives worse. What? <laughs> That's yeah. just, this is like against everything that you read in, in courses and, and books about uh, sales and marketing and copyrights, like, you know, improve people's lives. We do this to change other people's lives, et cetera. And now you're telling us we have to make it worse? Yes. And um, I'm glad you brought that up. Her reaction was very similar. So it, this, and this definitely uh, re requires an explanation. Think of it this way. Now, I want to pivot a bit. We're talking about our psychology, so I want to segue a little bit into the psychology of our prospect because we're intertwined. We must be intertwined, and, and, our, and our, our writing has to reflect that. We have to keep this in mind. So our prospect is you know, busy. They have a lot of emails in their inbox. And I'll tell you, just two days ago, two or three days ago, I was on a Southwest flight and I happened to see someone in the row ahead of me checking their email. So it was a neat little window into our prospect's life. They had their Gmail. I think it was Gmail, their Gmail account opened. I mean, it was a wall of unopened emails. He was he was clicking through a bunch of them. I, I would suspect he probably had hundreds that were unopened. And it was this wonderful doorway into what this person was trying to accomplish. The plane was about to take off. He was trying to get through them all. And he really was just checking for updates, looking for a reason not to read, and just kept on clicking through. So any boring email that just delivers news or information that he can quickly scan and just be done with and delete is, is, is making his life better. Just slogging through his emails is a way of just making his life simpler and better. An email that grabs his attention and engages his emotions and makes him stop and and, and forget about the rest of his emails, that is not making his life better. At that moment, it is actually making his life worse. It is an annoyance. It is a distraction. So when I was talking to this woman, I told her, it's like, you need to evoke emotions in that prospect that they would not, let's say, consciously want you to. They, no one's walking around demanding to be distracted, to be titillated, to be shocked to be intrigued, to have their curiosity driven. Now, of course, as the process continues, and this is what I told her, as the person keeps reading your email and then does engage, and let's assume they do click and and watch your VSL, and they are uh, they find the product as a match for them, and they buy it, and then they take action on that product and make money or improve their health or what have you, that is when you make their life better. Until then, your chief responsibility is not making their life better. It is to engage them emotionally, which oftentimes will make their life even worse. It's, it's providing them with emotional tension where there was none before. So that's, that's the opening frame I want to start with. And not many people realize that. Most informative writing or how-to books is all presented in a way that's like, oh, okay, yep, you know, makes me feel good. 
I'm gaining knowledge. No, no, no. Sales, especially email sales, is is about actually distracting them and making their life worse. So, so I can move on from there. But that's unless you have a question about that. That's oh yeah, the first for thing sure, for sure. First okay. off, this is big. Okay, even for me, and I'm I'm just reading marketing copywriting books all the time. I write a lot of copy for myself. Even for me, this is huge. Now, there's a couple of good things, really solid things you mentioned, which I kind of want to go back on in order to highlight and emphasize for listeners. First off, you said the prospect is busy and he is or she is looking for a reason not and not you kind of kind of just, you know, all caps, underline, bold, mm-hmm. italicize, everything not to read your emails. And this is huge. Most people Mm -hmm. who write emails do not think in that way. They don't think in that context. And you as a copywriter, an accomplished one to that, you're actually approaching the writing from a standpoint of my reader does not look forward to reading my email. Like everything in his inbox, which is bursting with emails, he actually is looking for reasons not to read those emails, even though he's like unconsciously hitting the inbox all the time. Like we, we're all addicted to our email inboxes for some reason. We go there, but we we look for reasons not to read those emails. And this is huge. If you understand that, it forces you to approach your email writing from a completely different standpoint. Exactly. Like a lot of things just don't pass the quality control if that's how you judge them. You know what I mean? Now, the other thing you mentioned is create emotional tension where there was none before. Now, we spoke about emotion. We actually devoted episodes, full episodes, to just explaining the difference between logical selling and logical marketing and emotional marketing and why one is uh, the letter is better than the former. But I was listening to a book today in my Audible called Contagious, which is a book about how do things go viral? Like what makes something mm-hmm. go viral? And they mm-hmm. proved they they actually held a sign like a scientific experiment go on about how emotional tension increases activity in the brain, which forces us to share more. So you know these shows, these crime shows like CSI and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. During the moments when the tension is the highest, when they go for a commercial break, these ad spots co- cost the most money because the prospect is so aroused emotionally that they will be more likely to remember the ad and more likely to purchase and more likely to share if, you know, compared to, say, the end of the show where the tension has been released. That's fascinating. And uh, yeah, that's that's also not surprising. And, you know, it's interesting because it, here is a show like, let's say, CSI. Millions of people are sitting down to watch it and voluntarily doing so. Uh, and in a way, they're paying for the privilege. And it is one long hour of taking them through an emotional roller coaster ride. And most of those emotions are not positive ones. But um, we human beings love that. And yet when it comes to marketing, marketers tend to neglect that, that, that facet of human psychology. And everyone loses as a result. So I'm glad you brought those points up. Awesome. So Um, go ahead, please proceed. Certainly, certainly. So, okay, with that being said, your prospect is busy. They are an emotional creature. You are assuming that they want to skip through your email as fast as humanly possible. What the hell are you supposed to do? So let me let me take a step back. Back when I first discovered direct response marketing, I took I made a huge leap forward in my uh, in my progress and in, in being able to make money and my ability to generate sales when i discovered a book that really would change my life the name of that book was killer orgasms now the i can see author, how that would change your life yep absolutely so if anyone was expecting one of your generic self-help books, sorry, not not on today's show. <laughs> the author of that book was the name of that author was Gary Halbert, which I'm sure you recognize and many of your students would recognize. I had no idea who he was, though. So I Googled him and I discovered that he is, as as he proclaims on his own uh, on his own website when he was alive, the world's greatest copywriter. And this is right around the time I was studying direct response. So I thought this was perfect. So Gary Halbert wrote a couple brilliant things, which I'm going to share on the show. And I've, I've made a tremendous amount of money following them ever since and keeping them in mind. One was that there is a stronger emotional driver than shouting out benefits at a prospect. I mean, here, here's Gary Halbert, who is dealing in the biggest niches, uh, weight loss, 
let's see what else, how to make money, you know, he even s- selling cars, that sort of thing. Very competitive finance. And he, the point he drove home was this, the most powerful emotion you can engage is curiosity. And in today's, you know, world of teaching sales copy, benefit-driven headlines, um, you talk about how much weight the prospect is going to lose. You know, people hammer home that you have to, you have to give them what they want. You have to have flashy headlines telling them they're going to do this, this, and this, and this. That's fine. But if you are taking a 100% cold, cold prospect, and if you want to make a lot of money, you will have to face this reality. You will have to attempt to sell a very cold prospect. You cannot even hit them with benefits yet because today's audience is tremendously jaded. It always was. But I, I suspect more today because the ease we can deliver uh, with which we can deliver advertisements, they're exposed to more ads. So benefits can lose their luster because the prospect can go, yeah, right, whatever. And, and that we have banner blindness today. Our brains uh, talk about uh, how our brains are wired. They are literally wired uh, to ignore banner ads today. And at the same time, I don't have a study in front of me to prove it. Um, There might be one. I believe that hardcore benefit-driven statements are starting to not have that active effect on on the human brain that they used to. But one thing that has not gone out of style, and in fact, is probably more effective than ever before, is curiosity. Engaging that, huh? reaction in a prospect that it's almost a tickle. That is your secret to email magic, not only getting them uh, opened, but getting prospects to click on your link of the email to your VSL. So uh, do you have anything, a question on that before I move on? Well, to be honest, to be honest, that's how I've been doing things all along. You know, I've uh, I've always kind of worshipped curiosity more than benefits, but it is, again, it is so against what everybody else is preaching right now. You know, and that is one of the reasons why most people, at least that I talk to, are so afraid of writing emails, for instance, is that they don't think they can write a good enough benefit. They don't think they are good enough for that stuff. But, you know, I found curiosity to be extremely simple to do, extremely simple to pull off, which allows me, and as I know you, write an email in less than 15 minutes that I can actually make a lot of money. Not to mention that, you know... <laughs> It's funny that at the beginning of the show, you mentioned that that our job as copywriters to make to not make their life easier because curiosity pisses people off. And, you know, as somebody who writes blind copy a lot, I get that a lot as well. Even, you know, when somebody applies to buy some traffic with us, we keep a lot of the things blind until we can make sure the prospect is a good fit for what we do and that we can actually help them. And we have a lot of people quite literally quit and or write angry letters to us saying how how annoyed and insulted they are because we simply don't reveal everything there is to reveal about our offer for keeping things blind. Mm -hmm. You know, in an interesting way, the fact that you receive hate mail shows that, you know, there is a level of an emotional engagement going on. So it's it's great to hear that, that, you know, that you're definitely on the cusp like I am in terms of curiosity being one of the most powerful emotional triggers. So so that said, I'd love to I'd love to share some of the absolutely specifics, go ahead specific, go yeah, ahead specifics on how I do that. Okay, so here is his the the frame I use um, when creating specifics for email copy. When that prospect is is reading my email, my goal is to get them to click on the link within, and uh, that link will go to whatever VSL. I don't give a crap. If they are slamming their finger down on the key so hard they almost break it because they desperately want to land on my page, or if they are just kind of clicking it thinking, oh, okay, fine, let's let's see. Let's see the answer to this. In fact, in a way, I kind of like them engaging with that, oh, fine, let's see, because that is the first little string that's going to get them eventually pulled into uh, the VSL and eventually make a purchase. So the two keys to curiosity. Number one is I want to engage them with 
some sort of specificity. So I'm gonna, I'll start with uh, nutritional supplements because that's my world, but then I'll definitely provide some examples for, let's say, selling a course on how to uh, build a money-making business. So I um, wrote some copy for a supplement for improving brain health, for improving cognitive function. And this supplement has two ingredients in it, and one of them was tested in a... Um, a university sponsored study showing that it actually improves working memory within one hour of taking it. So this study happened to take place in Australia. Interesting little factoid. I keep that in mind. This study involved, let's say, I believe it was 67 people. Interesting specific fact. I keep that in mind. Half of the prospects, or uh, sorry, not prospects, but half of the subjects of the study were retired. Interesting little fact. I keep that in mind. So what I want to do, again, talking about curiosity versus benefits, is I want to present a specific news item that I can write about for the prospect. So the one part was specificity. The second part is I want to use the power of what is not spoken. Now, notice that I'm pausing a little bit. It's both to gather my thoughts and also because pausing like this helps to generate attention. It keeps people on the edge wondering what is going to happen next. I quite physically leaned into my screen, right? You know, as you were pausing, it was like, just you know, say it, say it. <laughs> See, that's, that's great. I appreciate the feedback. And you know what? Most people are, either they don't know about this or they're hesitant to do this. Let me just take a 30 second, like a little sidetrack here. Uh, this is also especially important in public speaking. And most speakers I see, they they run on the stage and they're just like, oh, thank you. Great to be here today. They just launch it to talk about what I'm going to talk about. This is really great. If they could just pause for a second, they can engage the audience so much more. And that same power of absence, the unspoken, uh, the missing the emptiness also applies to email. So specificity, because you want your email to have sort of news value because news is what drives curiosity, or let's say, you know, is a huge way to drive curiosity. But you also want to use the power of emptiness because remember, you're, you're making their life worse. If you deliver all the news, you just made their life better. You don't want to fulfill them with news. You want them to click the link. All right, so I, I know I'm throwing a lot of stuff in the air. Let me drive this home with an example to tie it together. So I, I gave you the details of this brain health ingredient that had this cool study behind it. Interesting news value there. So when I craft an email, I start harnessing the power of those specifics. So I will have a subject line, something along the lines of, Game-changing research out of Australia will redefine brain health forever or something like that. And That's then I would play claim. with that. I, yeah, I'd shorten it. So I'd say, like, for instance, uh, brain research out of Australia will change baby boomers' lives forever. Now, that one I might want to write down. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's news value. So if when essentially, you know, your cheat sheet for curiosity is news. If, if you have a if you struggle with how do I make my audience curious, we'll just go with news value. That's how you do it. So essentially what I presented is like an article for a news for a news story. It's like, what? There's there's this brain health study out of Australia. Now, notice I did. I didn't just say brain health study. That's really awesome. That'll improve your brain in one hour. And oh, my God, who else wants to improve their memory? Oh, my God, it's just 1995. No, I, I use specifics because in any news story, they would use specifics, especially odd ones like Australia. That's on the other side of the globe. It's it's not like um a study out of, say, uh, Maryland. But, you know, even then, any kind of specificity is going to help. But Australia is especially cool, so I love it. So going on the news theme, let's say they they open the subject line about this game-changing uh, study for brain health. You know, the email 
would begin thusly. It would, you know, your salutation could be whatever you would use. Uh, you could use dear friend, dear reader. You know, Gary was big, Gary Halbert was big on just an, an empty phrase because really you just want them to get into the, the guts of your email as fast as possible. So, you know, dear reader. And I always like to reiterate my subject line in some way because I like there to be alignment in all steps of my marketing. You don't want to jar your prospect. If you mention that there's some sort of brain health study in Australia in your subject line, the first sentence of your email could essentially be a repeat of that. They're, 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 you as a marketer might think they'd be annoyed by you uh, repeating yourself. No, no, it's 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 actually uh, crack open any news article. Usually their first sentence is just sort of a reciting, you know, the facts that got them there in the fir- got the reader there in the first place. So I'd say, dear reader, recently a study came out of Australia that could change the way you look at brain health forever. Researchers uh, took 67 volunteers and gave them a certain ingredient. And then they put them through a test and were shocked at what they discovered. The volunteers who took this ingredient had their brain fog disappear in just one hour. And in fact, you know, at this point, if, if there's a graph I can show based on the study results, I'd put a little graph in there. I just be like, you know, below is a graph of these actual results. Hold on. Just let uh, me let me get this clear. Sure. I, I sure. just apologize for cutting in like that. But are you like are you doing this on the go? Like, do you have this written down before the call or are you just... I mean, I don't have it. I don't have it written down from you. I didn't do anything before the call. But to be fair, there's a reason I started with this. It's this was something I pretty much wrote several months ago. So I kind of remember what I wrote. Okay, because it sounded to me with all the pauses like he's actually doing it on the fly. Like he's picking. It's incredible. I mean, very few copywriters are willing to go high wire and, you know, just do copywriting. uh, Just speak their copy on the call on the spot like that. Yeah. And, you know, well, I appreciate that. And it's And it's it's just because it's a written medium. So most copywriters, that's what their strength is, not necessarily talking about it. In fact, well, I'll tell you what, in a couple of minutes, I'll, I will just do one for a course on making money. What the hell? So, so it's, you know, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially, I, I basically just gave you the whole email, though. There's always a final go-to line, which would be the hyperlinked one uh, with your call to action. And in this case, I, I basically said, you know, here, here are the study results. Here's, and then I'd show a picture of a graph. And then the final line could be, get you ready for this? Ooh, there's your secret super duper advanced copywriting trick for click throughs. The final line would be, click here to discover what this ingredient is. And, and that's it's news. It's specific news. And what did I do? I left it empty. I made their lives worse. I told them every freaking thing except the one thing they needed, which is what that ingredient was. Now, this is brilliant. Now, now talk about unspoken. Let's talk about, I gave you what I did, but I think it's more important to talk about what I did not do. I did not tell them the ingredient. I did not say that ingredient is in a supplement. I did not say I am selling that supplement, and I did not tell them they're clicking on a link to find out more information about this supplement. I told them none of that. They don't need to know that. They can find that out on the VSL. I don't need to get ahead of myself. It's sort of like the dating equivalent of you're talking to a woman for the first time and you're arranging another meeting and you're saying to her, you know, by the way, this is really great. There's actually a restaurant really nearby where we can meet. And the restaurant is like three blocks from my apartment. My apartment's really clean. My bed's really clean. You're really going to like me, especially when we're in bed together at the end of the night. We're going to have a great time. That, every <laughs> part of that could be true, but, you know, leave it unsaid for God's sakes. You know, geez. <laughs> <laughs> That's like one of the best dating tips I've ever heard, honest. Yeah. And, and you know, the thing is, no one would really do that. And yet with our marketing, we do. You know, it's, it's, I it's got fun. close to that. I got really close to that. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I'm saying that, you know, I admitted this publicly many times before, but I really sucked at dating. So I came real close to that, to that example. Well, hey, you know, 
at least that's a ballsy example. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll be honest too. I think I, I used to suck at dating too. I think that's a commonality among all us direct response marketers because um, unlike dating where, where you're interacting with a person one-on-one, the power of direct response is that you can sort of be home in your computer and you, and you can interact with thousands or even millions of people without ever actually having to stand in front of them. So I think that's an interesting commonality we all share. Yeah, good point. At least a lot of us. But, but that's why I love to use these dating metaphors, because all of a sudden these two worlds clash where you realize, wow, I, you know, I'm, I, I know I shouldn't engage in behavior in one area, but here I am in my marketing and I'm not romancing in my marketing at all. I'm not being intriguing. I'm not taking things as, you know, at the proper pace that I, that I should be taking them at, that my prospect is, is ready for. You know, when they're opening your email and you're engaging their curiosity, don't slam it shut. Don't resolve every thread and then some and shove them on their way. Let them in the door, you know, get get them involved and and tell them there's an ingredient and show them how they can continue the journey to learn more. And this extra click will serve as a micro commitment as well. Yes, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And and that, by the way, that brings up the other uh, to close a loop. That brings up the the second Gary Halbert um, idea I wanted to share. He used a metaphor of watching little tugboats haul ocean liners. He always wondered, you know, he'd he'd see this little tugboat with this giant, giant, massive rope. This it's like a it's like half a foot thick, tugging this ocean liner. And he'd always marveled, how the heck do they? What do they connect these things? Do, do they drop the rope from the ocean liner? What's going? How do they handle this thing? It must weigh thousands of pounds. You you couldn't even lift it. So he watched. And what he saw actually was from the beginning, he, he watched the process. He didn't just see it as an event. The process was the, the, uh, the ocean liner would share a little normal sized rope, like a thread with the tugboat. And the people in the tugboat would actually pull that little easily handled rope to them that would connect to a larger rope, that would connect to a thicker rope. And it would eventually lead to that massive rope that could actually support the opposing forces of the two ships, which is sort of the equivalent of, of a VSL being able to support a credit card, per, a purchase with a credit card. That's not the email's job. I don't want them busting out their credit card yet. I mean, I won't yell at them if they do, but the point is to get them into the VSL, which and that is designed to eventually make a purchase or, or get the prospect to make a purchase. So anyway, uh, anything else before I go on there? Oh no, I'm I'm dying to uh, to hear more about the money making example because I'll be honest, in our industry, very few people do this sort of marketing. Like very few people approach email from a standpoint of a vagueness. I mean, anyone who does usually just tries to do the tricks, like oh, you claim you're a four hundred dollar commission here, you know. But that's just bullshit. That's the kind of stuff that gets you banned. And no one does the news value. Nobody does that. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up because there are many roads to curiosity. There are many techniques. But like you said, you know, some of them are not only banned from networks, but, you know, that you can also just burn a list real fast. News value, you're not going to burn your list. If, if you, that email that I just kind of, you know, mumbled through, you can send out many different variations of that. And you, your list really isn't going to burn out. Networks don't mind that sort of thing. And I'll get into more of the compliance stuff later. But but it, it's it's that's that's why news can be so valuable for for curiosity, because it doesn't burn any bridges. You won't burn a list with that. OK, so but, you know, here's the big question. It's like, well, Nate, you just had you had this supplement. You had this study. You had all that prepared. Well, what, what about me? What you know, what about my niche? So, OK. So let me share with you, 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 you heard the event, you heard me bust out that email. Let me share with you the process of how I could come up with that. Ideally, if you're writing email marketing or your copywriter is writing emails for you, they also wrote the VSL or you also wrote your VSL. That's ideal. It's not, you don't need it, but that's ideal. Here's why. In your VSL, you want to have a collection of interesting facts and specifics about your niche, about the problem your prospects are facing, and about your product that you can draw from to write your emails, which is what I did with that brain supplement. I focused on one of the ingredients, and then I focused on a study of the ingredient, and I spun an email out of that about the news value. Well, you can do the same with your product. So let's say, for instance, we're in the money-making niche. We've got a money-making product. 
And it is based on renting email lists because the person who's selling it, they were banned from Google. So they found a better way to make money faster. And in that VSL, they tell their whole story. Hey, I was just like you. I was at this dead end job and I decided to quit and I discovered Google AdWords and I was making money hand over fist. And then one day they banned me because of uh, my landing page. They didn't like my VSL. So I, I, I was almost bankrupt. You know, uh, my fam- I thought my family was, was going to break down. I thought I was going to have to go find another lower paying job. You know, my wife was terrified. I couldn't tell my kids. But then I started searching for this other little known resource and I discovered that I could actually do media buys and rent email lists. Okay, so let's say that's your VSL. So what I would do for an email is I would draw little interesting factoids from that entire VSL. And I would put together a tiny little news story that has specifics, but there's the power of emptiness. There's a lot that goes unsaid. So like the subject line, see here, here, I'm doing it again. So the subject line could be like 52 year old man gets banned from Google hyphen makes $7,683 $7,683 in one day as a result. So then, you know, the opening could be, Dear Reader, three years ago, I woke up one morning and discovered um, an email from Google. They had, and the next paragraph could be, they had banned me. They shut down everything. I thought I was going to go bankrupt. And then the next line would be, three weeks later, however, I managed to make Seven thousand six hundred, whatever, thirty-three dollars. I said, and I did it in a single day. Next paragraph. The weird part is, this is actually four times more than I ever made in one day with Google. And then the next paragraph. Click here to discover what I found. So that that is that is where I'd start in terms of like a news value email that would um, be pitching a money making course. And I have no idea what you would. Th- Igor, am I way off base? What do you think of that? Oh, no, you're good. You're good. But I can hear I can hear an objection up in the air. I did not make any money ever. I'm still a newbie. I'm still trying to promote this product right here. And uh, I don't have such proof and I don't feel comfortable using, you know, these huge numbers. What do I do? You know, what would you what would you tell? Basically, what would you tell a person if they're they want to write their own emails? They're a member of a business opportunity or promote an affiliate product and they can't just say I made X, Y, Z dollars. I just, you know, they don't have income proof. Certainly. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's a valid point. And that's actually easily overcome because in my business and um, well, not in my business, but let's say when I'm writing for Agora, uh, I'm never writing about myself. I'm always writing about someone else. Well, I should 90 percent of the time writing about someone else. So this is an example of where I would go to whatever that opportunity is and I would pour through all the materials like the the landing page and all that and i would pull out all the fodder i could to make a similar case for instance instead of so again i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna bust something out then i'm gonna ask you igor if this if this would if this is a better example i would say you know a 53 year old man you know gets banned from google makes seven grand as a result it would be like dear friend there i'd say like one day Bob, you know, da, 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 and I just do the same email like that. And at the end, it would be click here to find out what he discovered. So it would actually turn into all the third person. You'd be writing a news article about this other guy and uh, you'd arrange it. So whatever, whatever the VSL says about him, it would be applicable. So is that is that getting closer? It oh, might yeah. help if I knew. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Every single business opportunity, every single program out there, they have success stories. They have the founder who is usually very successful. And there's tons of material we can pull uh, as far as like income proof, as far as journeys we can document because uh, these journeys, they sell. And a lot of people who read your emails, they will model themselves after any, you know, like a particular case study, which is why all these programs have like gazillion case studies all the time because you got to hit all these, you know, customer profiles. Great. And, you know, the person writing the email can involve themselves a little bit if he thinks the the extra rapport could help, because he could always just say, I found this 52 year old man, Uh, because then there's an extra bit of news value in there, because it's sort of like someone sharing something on Facebook where it's like, hey, look what I found. I stumbled upon this. This is so weird. 
And when it comes to the money-making niche, what I want to emphasize is that you want to crank up this kind of news value and curiosity because like, we ta- like we've discussed uh, earlier and we, like we've discussed uh, before when we uh, talked in person, compliance can be a major issue. Now, from what I've seen, networks can be very strict on income claims, uh, things like that, and income proof. But I've never I've never had a network come down on me for curiosity and delivering some interesting bit of news. So there's a compliance benefit. And the other benefit is that if you crank up the curiosity, the specifics and the news value, you may not be able to have income claims, but your email is going to have that extra bit of authenticity and believability that's going to support that curiosity for the click. What I mean by that is if you engage their curiosity and then you toss them a bunch of like money making testimonials, you're starting to get into that land, that area where the prospect is like, ah, I've solved the mystery. This is a money making opportunity. Thanks. Not for me. So you kind of want to have this objective feel to support the curiosity so you can, you know, let them let them in the door and decide for themselves once they've gone through all the rest of the materials. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um I was I was right uh, when I said it's going to be one for the books. Just yeah, just so you know Nate, you're so good that, you know, midway through the episode when we kind of went past the point, you know, we usually do like a 20 25 minute episode. Uh I just couldn't stop you. You know, this is too good and uh, we're now uh, getting close to an hour. Now, do you know who else had an hour long episode on the show? Who else? Mr. John Carlton. Oh wow. You know, yes. you know uh, again, another person that shaped my copywriting via via his writing because he you know he and gary albert were very very close friends so that's amazing well i'll make you know i will i will wrap up because i know there are some other things i promised i would deliver and there are two in particular one is on images and emails this is another thing that can really drive up curiosity if someone can take a uh, a screen grab of something interesting from the VSL and put it in their email as as a bit of proof that can drive up clicks and always use the power of the the uh, the emptiness, the unspoken. Don't make it a photo that people can easily decipher and solve for themselves. One time I took a picture of our uh, one of our brain supplement capsules. And I, it was just, it was like a selfie. It was a selfie of my hand holding the pill. It was a super close up. It was actually incredibly blurry. <laughs> Bill I selfie. told the marketing team. <laughs> yeah, and I told the marketing team, this one's probably going to be better than a non-blurry one. And the subject line was something like, you know, game-changing brain pill is going to like something or other. I have no idea. And it was just a picture of this pill. It was like, click here to discover what this pill is. It's like, what? You have to, You have to check this out. So... If there's some little weird aspect that someone can draw from their the money making opportunity, use that. Not necessarily the most beneficial groundbreaking aspect. The, no, the weirdest part. Use the weirdest part. Uh, I pray. I pray that this money making opportunity is the the voice of the VSL is like some obese bald guy to get a screen grab of that bald guy's head, just the head. <laughs> and put it in the email. Maybe an eyeball or two. But I mean, I swear to God, it, we're just going for curiosity. Okay. And that segues into the last thing I want to talk about, which is if you're super lazy, you're you're not a writer, you're confused on how to do this, I've got some great news for you. The Some of the best, the best of the best fodder and uh, for, for email writing that you can find is right they're staring you in the face on the internet right now. And it's all those bizarre clickbait ads you see at the bottom of news articles. If you're listening to this right now and you you need write this down, just go to Forbes.com, F-O-R-B-E-S.com, like Forbes magazine or anywhere else, any other news site, scroll to the bottom of the article and you'll see six or eight clickbait ads like eat this before bed and lose belly fat in your sleep. I have a page pulled up, so I'm just reading them. 50 celebs that support Trump for president. Your diabetes could be gone with one, number one, odd trick. Do this tonight. See, this is all curiosity driven. It's specific and it's all empty because you're just like, eat what before bed? What? 
odd trick. What the heck is going on? Which celebs? Oh, my God. So all those clickbait ads that you've kind of trained yourself to ignore and that you don't, you know, you just don't pay much heed. They're just weird to you. You don't get them. They're like, whatever. There are millions and millions and millions of dollars behind those ads. They know what they're doing. Adapt them for your own niche. Eat this before bed and lose belly fat in your sleep. Write out this email sentence before bed. Click three buttons and make 700 bucks in your sleep. So I don't, I don't know if that could apply to your money. Yeah, that's definitely not, not flying with, you know, <laughs> hey, Weber, you're going to get banned for three clicking three buttons in your sleep and making 700 bucks. Oh, hey, Weber. <laughs> oh, hey, <But>, Weber. Um, <laughs> nice. But, uh, you know, we get the point. We get the yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. You, there's always ways where you can just take the concept and just news value and the power of emptiness. And there you have it. Wow. Honestly, you're the first person I've ever heard ever talk about the power of emptiness. Definitely heard of news value before, but emptiness is big. I mean, just just kind of rearranging your vision to approach things as, you know, what not to do. I notice you're big on that is absolutely incredible. I'm definitely going to be forwarding this call ASAP to my copywriter. This is just ridiculous value. And Nate, I couldn't be I couldn't be more grateful. Thank you so much. Now, do you take clients this time? Like, what, what are you busy with besides writing for the 800-pound gorilla? Well, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm building up my own nutritional supplement company. So I am, you know, I wish I could clone myself. I'm, I'm not taking clients right now. Um, I'm really just enjoying building out my own business and supporting that. And also, you know, doing doing calls like this, because I know, you know, doing things like this is helping folks out and will put me in touch with great people. I love meeting, I love meeting A players. So that that's where I'm at right now. And I also am actually putting together um, a site where I talk more about my story and how, how I learned all this. And also a lot of, you know, really high level business marketing and lessons for making money. So I don't know. Do, do you mind if I mention that at the end here? Oh, absolutely. I, I kind of set you up for it. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great, great. Thanks. So I don't know when you are listening to this. It is not up yet, but the website URL is naterifkin.com. And that's N-A-T-E-R-I-F, as in future, K-I-N.com. I said as in future, because I'm used to dealing with customer service on the phone. They're always like, Rifkin, Riskin? It's like, no, it's an F is in future. So naterifkin.com, that's where I'm going to be posting a lot of free, juicy content. It's going to be very bizarre content. And my hope is to get a lot of A players addicted to that content to make their lives worse at first, but as long as they go through it all, eventually make their lives better, which is, uh, again, what our email marketing is all about, making it win-win, make their lives worse when they first click, but as they, um, you know, join your business, their lives are better. So, so thank you, Yor. Nate, tell me you're, you offer some sort of consulting or something, because I'm sure there's going to be a ton of people who listen to this interview that's going to be syndicated to the entire show audience, my list, uh, and anywhere I can possibly plug it in. Tell me there is a way to work with you. Well, how about this? At that website, if there is ever any kind of way to do consulting or work with me, that is where you will find it. Is that fair enough? Yes. So, folks, www.naterifkin.com, Rifkin with an F like the future, naterifkin.com. And first off, go there for the content. I mean, you've just had a taste of what this guy knows and what he's willing to share, which quite honestly, I don't get a lot. I've had the pleasure of having some, uh, securing some big interviews, like really big uh, people you would be dying to listen to, that their interviews turned out to be so empty that I did not even publish them. So mm. I really appreciate, you know, you, Nate, for sharing this, the kind of stuff that I used to pay thousands of dollars to either go to a copywriting seminar or download like a really expensive home study course, or, you know, go on, on a, some sort of a black hat site and download it for free because I was too broke to pay for for it but you know this is incredible and i am extremely proud for the list building lifestyle show to be the first ever media outlet to allow you to show up and then share all this wisdom i'm i'm just psyched so guys again to find out more about nate his story uh tap into his knowledge base and to potentially if he ever decides to work with him go to 
www.naterifkin.com. Nate Rifkin with an F like the future. So, Nate, thank you so much again for doing this. And until next time we talk, have a good one. Oh, it's honored to be here. Thank you, Igor. Thank you for listening to the Liz Building Lifestyle. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes or Google Play to never miss an episode. Because who knows, just one conversion tactic we share on the show might double your list and double your business. Download the transcript of today's episode and all future episodes at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com. And don't forget to claim your complimentary copy of the Wealthy List Builder Survival Guide at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com forward slash survival. This is Igor Kafetz, and until next time we talk, have a good one. This is the podcastfactory.com.